Hey guys, welcome back to Ollie Talks Airsoft. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most pioneering airsoft guns that was ever released and one that everyone kind of needs to have in their collection or they need to have one of the grandchildren of this particular gun in their collection. And this is a gun that most experienced players will have one of and also most younger players as well. Most um, most people stepping into the sport will get tempted by one of these. And in my opinion, even today, even 20 years after the introduction of this product, it's still as relevant in game as it always has been. I am, of course, talking about the Tri-Shot shotgun. This one specifically is, as I said, it's 20 years old. Uh, this is a Tokyo Marie M3 Shorty. There was also an M3 Super 90, which was the same version of this, but with a full length stock and longer barrels, although the inner barrel lengths were the same. Um, and they also came out with the SPAS 12, uh, including the folding stock version. What made these guns absolutely groundbreaking and what really changed the game in Airsoft is the fact that they came with a three barrel system hence the name tri shot so prior to this you could buy shotguns in airsoft but they were essentially a sniper rifle so they would have a, a magazine that went into the gun didn't usually look like a shell and each time you uh, cocked the air pump on it it would fire one shot and it would tend to shoot at sniper rifle fps's as well so some of the GMP ones could be shooting at 400, 450 FPS, and they were actually known to be very good, kind of out in the woods sniper rifles, but it wasn't really the essence of what a shotgun was supposed to be. There was no stator or anything like that. And that's where Tokyo Marie really came in and changed the game. So this system with the three barrels, not only has three barrels, but it also has three chambers inside, and it also has three hop-up rubbers. Um, all the hop-ups are fixed and they're uh, set for a 0.2 gram BB, uh, which will give you, you know, 30 meters of range, maybe a, a shade more, um, you know, with a following wind. But actually it will give you quite a consistent spread on that as well. So I don't actually know if the barrels are tilted slightly to send the BBs in different directions, but you always get like a really quite consistent spread of BBs. Uh, if you ever want to tighten that in, you can use heavier weight BBs, but obviously that is going to reduce your range because of the fixed hop-up system. But if you're someone that's actually a pretty good shot and you've you know you've got used to pre-aiming with your shotgun and you know you can pop round a corner, expose yourself very quickly, fire off a single shot, which is actually three BBs. Um, sometimes using that heavier weight BB uh, can really help you just pick someone out with that single shot. Whereas with a rifle or, or any other gun for that matter, you'd have to pop round and fire three individual shots in order to get three shots out towards your target. So that's one of the reasons that these are so relevant. So back in the day when these came out, they were they were pretty expensive. They were about sort of £120. Uh, they can still be picked up today for around about 150 I believe. However, as I said, the grandchildren of these are just as good. So some of the features that have carried over and what we're really going to be talking about is there is an ASG version, uh, which is like the SAS-12. There are um, SEMA versions that are double eagle versions. And there's probably a couple other ones that I don't even know about. But essentially, if it's a tri shot, it will be based on this system. So what do you actually get with it? So in reverse order, we'll kind of go butt to tip. We're going to go reverse end on this. So this has got a a very plasticky, it looks like it's um, rubber textured, but I think it's just because I've worn a lot of gloves and a lot of the just the stickiness has just come off on the grips. It's very plasticky, as you can see there's very clear seam lines down the top, and as you can see the actual controls, so the fake charging handle here has broken off. I, d I don't even know what was actually supposed to be uh, here anymore, and you can see it is it is all marked up as Tokyo Marie and stuff and it does confirm on if you can see the writing on there it does confirm it's a three barrel three cylinder uh, system there is a little bit um, on the barrel which tells you what which shells uh, to use and obviously to 
read the instruction manual. Um, it's a, a metal uh, outer barrel and actually the, uh, the loading tube as well is, um, is also made of metal. Uh, the actual receiver itself is made of plastic and when you come down here you do actually have a, a metal trigger and you have a plastic uh, push through safety which actually completely blocks the trigger when it's pushed through and then that actually allows the trigger to be pulled. Okay, so moving down, you've then got uh, this little lever here. When I pull this lever, you will notice the part on the inside moving backwards. What that does is that actually releases the shell, and most of these will have a door on the bottom which will swing open. And if you pull back hard when the gun is facing like that, usually it's enough force to flick the shell down out onto the floor. So if you want it just straight out of the gun, then that's probably a fast way to do it. Just pull it right back and it will probably flick it out. If not, you can pull it back and like on my one, I just have to go in and peel the shell out. So the shells were, for this were also another innovation. So they were the first time that you actually had something that looked like a shotgun shell that you got to put into your shotgun. Uh, all of these again work the same. There's lots of different manufacturers that come, have come out with them. This happens to be, I think, one of the original shells that I got with this gun. Uh, it holds 30 BBs in here. So anyone that's quick at maths will tell you that with three barrels, that's 10 shots that you're gonna get out of each one of these shells. So that's clearly not gonna be enough for a whole game, but you know, once you've picked up five or six of these shells, it makes it a pretty viable option. So inserting the shell, uh, if the door isn't already open, like mine permanently is, uh, you'd pull back on here to open the door, put the shell in and just push it down in there. And it will sit in there quite happily. To actually load the gun, what you need to do is you need to pull back on this slightly. Uh, again, I don't think it's I don't think it's rubberized. I think it's literally just rubber that's kind of come off um, come off my gloves and things like that. As you can see, it's again pretty pretty scuffed up. Actually, when we move to the front, we can see that it is missing the front sight entirely on this particular one. Again, it's an old gun. It's um. It's been bashed around, uh, it's not been treated well. Uh, I believe on the real one, this part would change it between semi and pump. Um, obviously it doesn't actually do anything on here. And we have a, a front sling loop, of which the rear one I've actually removed. Um, I don't know where it is, that was years ago. And this end cap comes off, I, and it's, it's slightly broken as well. So I have no idea how that's staying on there. It just does. So when you first get these, they can be quite hard to pump, uh, especially if you're a smaller or a bit more slight, or you you know you might have to go and do a few uh, barbell curls beforehand. But I'd suggest you know practicing with something like this in the back garden, obviously with some good eye protection on. Be careful of ricochets and things like that; they can still damage your eyes. Um, with something like uh, with something like this, just get used to it. And actually, after a couple of hundred cycles, they do tend to loosen up a little bit, and they will break in. So. There's obviously nothing in this. I have checked it. I've checked the barrels. So when you get used to it, you kind of end up pushing forward with this arm as you pull back with this arm. And I'll just discharge. There we go. So they can be pretty loud. And as I said, in, in a close quarters situation, this is really a close quarters sniper rifle. You know, if someone's poking around a corner, you can only see a little bit of them. You're getting three shots off in one go, especially if you're used to, as I said, pre-aiming. So that's basically, um, if you're behind a barricade, and I know I've seen someone pop around a doorway over there, what I can do is aim my shot up, lean out, take the shot, lean back in. But I'm not just taking one shot, I'm taking three shots. So my last piece of advice probably with one of these is obviously um, you're going to need to manage uh, how, you, how you deal with your shells because you're not just going to go out with one shell. You're going to want to get a few of these. They're pretty cheap. Um, 10 pounds will probably get you about three or four of these shells. So that's not a huge investment in order to kind of get one of these up and running. The fact that you can buy, as I said, the Seamers, the A, you know, the ASG ones, they're all sort of around about 50, you know, 50 pounds. And with that, you usually get the metal barrel version. There are plastic barrel versions out there. Um, I've not really had any experience, but I can't see why they'd be hugely different. I mean, this is a, 
I go with a plastic receiver, and obviously after taking some damage, it's still um, it's still shooting absolutely fine. So this is um, the fact that this runs on spring as well means that it's a great gun for an impromptu game. So if you didn't know that you were going out, or one of your friends phones you up and says, "I've had a really bad day. I want to go out shooting tonight. Um, should we pop down and play some CQB or something?" Absolutely, go do that. This is the perfect gun for it. You don't need to charge any batteries. You don't need any gas for it. Um, as long as you've got a little bit of upper body strength, then you will be able to run one of these. So with that being said, um, I hope you've enjoyed today's very quick look. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend or evening or whenever you're watching this and um, if you like the video like comment subscribe and I will see you on the next one